Hey guys, gals, and others. It's the Cannabis Crone, and this is my second take. Unfortunately, I uh, went way over. You know, no one's going to listen to me babble on for 40 minutes. So I'm going to try and streamline this and not go off on tangents. Um, and I got notes to kind of keep me in line here. But first things first. Now, this, this episode, for, you can like and subscribe uh, if you want to learn more about cannabis healing. Most of my podcasts are about that. I have quite a few political ones as well, but most of them are about the importance of cannabis healing, uh, especially with a medical industry that's based on solely on profit. So that's what this will be about. Um, you can also ring the bell, you know, uh, you can ring my bell, ring my bell. <laughs> Um, and then you'll know like when I make another video because it's like whenever I just feel like it I don't really have a like a set schedule. So I Have been called an anti-vaxxer in fact just recently by somebody that I thought knew me uh, And that is not true. In fact, I have to schedule a tetanus shot pretty soon here um, I just have the ability to still critically think uh, and ask questions and see the bigger picture um one of the things about me that may be different from the person who called me the anti-vaxxer is that I don't rely on a steady diet of CNN or M MSNBC or Fox News or any of those. I'm not a mainstream media person. Um, I think that, uh, I don't think CNN and MSNBC are any better than Fox News. I think all three of them uh, only give you a small sliver of the truth and only if that small sliver of truth supports their political narrative. That's the bottom line. I think Rachel Maddow is just as bad as Tucker Carlson and we could get into that. I mean, I could go on for hours about why, but so I understand that a lot of people out there, that's all they see is mainstream media and knowing and, and having the news sources that I have and that I, you know, watch and that I listen to, it, it's, it scares me that there are so many people out there that are only doing mainstream media because you're not getting the truth. You're not knowing what's going on in the country and it's scary. I've been called a conspiracy theorist. Well, if the conspiracy fits, then fucking wear it, okay? Um, because as of right now, Centrist America's beloved FDA is receiving 45% of their budget from the companies of Big Pharma, okay? The one entity that is supposedly regulating the pills and potions that Big Pharma sells the American public is receiving payment from the very entities it's supposed to be watching for corruption and dishonesty. Okay, so uh, conspiracy? Well, it certainly isn't ethical. <laughs> Do you think so? Do you think it's ethical that Big Pharma is funding almost half of the FDA's budget? Okay, and here is, uh, just to, to let you know, I've, I put this article, here we go. Oh my gosh, now it's going to take forever to load. I have cheap technology. Nearly half of the FDA's budget now comes from user fees paid by companies seeking approval for medical devices or drugs. So close to 45% of the FDA's budget comes from these user fees that companies pay when they apply for approval of a medical device or drug. So, hi, will you approve my drug? Oh, and here's some money. I mean, to me, that would be like Purdue or Golden Plump paying the chicken inspector's salary. Am I right? I mean, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But that, yeah, we can no longer trust any aspect of our healthcare industry as long as it's a for-profit system Profit will always come before human life, always. So you can't trust that. They will never, it, the, the patient will never be first. The patient will never be first. I don't care if you have a wonderful doctor. The, that doctor, that wonderful doctor is still a part of a very corrupt corporate system. And so no one will ever be getting um, 
their lives will never be put above profit ever in the medical industry that we have right now. Um, I've also been accused of thinking cannabis can help every ailment known to man. And I will take that accusation because I truly believe it can. I'm not saying it can cure everything, but I think that almost every malady that humankind has can be improved, even if it's ever so slightly, by the use of cannabis. I truly believe that. Now, real quick, we'll go through why, and then I'm going to tell you about the medicines that I make and how they've helped me. Now, this is just personal. I've used myself as a guinea pig so that you guys can get the information. Um, the endocannabinoid system, which we all have, regulates every major system within our physiology. Respiratory, digestive, neurological, immune, very important when going through a world pandemic. Um, and it runs on cannabinoids, which come in their most potent and natural form from marijuana, pot, cannabis, the ganj, the icky sticky, Mary Jane, whatever you want to call it. That's where the best cannabinoids come from. We are covered in cannabinoid receptors. Every organ that we have has cannabinoid receptors, which means these little things waiting to grab cannabinoids. Um, so yeah, I mean, that should show you right there. We were meant to ingest cannabis. We were meant to use it. And it's not just smoking. Cannabis is not just smoking. And I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, so the ways that cannabis has helped me live a healthier life, uh, is through talking to growers and people that know we went to, uh, Oregon to, to meet a friend of ours who, who was at the time had a, uh, a warehouse out there. He was growing legally. And we, we got to meet people and talk to people. And um, it's, 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 it's so word of mouth right now because really Big Pharma still has this chokehold. You know, America's not doing really hardly any research. You've got independent researchers. But it's not like Israel or Canada where they're actually, I mean, Canada's actually, the government is funding this research because now that it's legal, they want to know everything that it can do. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't anybody? Well, if it's competition to your bottom line, like it is to Big Pharma, that's different. Oh, and by the way, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's still you know, classified as a dangerous drug, and yet, um, and, and with no health benefits, this is the classification, no health benefits, and yet Big Pharma's already uh, synthesized like Marinol. Well, if there's no health benefits in marijuana, then why would you want to synthesize something from it? You know, so these are just, anyway, cannabis tinctures. I'll go through the alcohol tincture first. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's sitting on the shelf. Now, um, alcohol tincture is made with a very high-end vodka, at least how I make it, cannabis leaves, buds, stems, and pieces of root. Uh, all of those have medicinal properties, different ones. I believe in whole property healing. So that means I use everything on the plant. Um, take this, put it up on a shelf for three to four months, Strain it, and you have yourself alcohol-based tincture. It's good for disinfecting and healing open wounds and sores. It also cured the open sores that our dog got from having blastomycosis when nothing else would. Um, clearing up ear infections. I've been able to clear up a, an ear infection that was bothering me for months. I couldn't go into the doctors. I couldn't afford to, and it was painful. I couldn't hear out of this ear. I would took a little bit of the tincture on... Um, uh, <laughs> swab, <laughs> cotton swab, and very gently didn't, I didn't jam it down in there, but very gently, you know, made sure that I got the ear canal saturated and I'm finally able to hear again. And that was something I didn't know. That was that I tried out of desperation. See, like I said, I'm a guinea pig here for you guys. <laughs> I'm doing it for you. Um, anti-anxiety, anti-panic medication, a few drops of the alcohol-based tincture under the tongue and suddenly it resets you. You know, it doesn't get you high, but it takes away that, that heart-pounding anxiety and, and gives you a sense of calm as an effective aid for autism. Glycerin tincture is made with organic vegetable glycerin, leaves, stems, roots, and bud. Um, it requires a bit of cr uh, cooking in the crock pot, and it's, it's a viscous. It's kind of a very thick and very sweet, 
And I prefer using that for animals as, as opposed to the alcohol-based tincture because alcohol just isn't good for cats or dogs at all. Um, so the, uh, and, and when I used it on dude for his wounds, I actually used it as a topical. He wasn't ingesting it. He was ingesting the glycerin-based tincture. Uh, it requires a bit of cooking in a crock pot. And with uh, that glycerin tincture, it uh, helps you maintain calm. It's really good for insomnia as an effective aid for autism or seizures. A supplement for cats and dogs. Uh, they should be microdosed every day on this stuff. Very easy to microdose daily with the glycerin tincture. And it's effective for pain management. Now, butter and edibles. Here is the butter. This is what uh, my butter looks like. So, yep, you have little butter pats. And as long as you have butter in your fridge, um, I know one woman that uses it for pain and she just nibbles off of the butter. She just buys the butter and just nibbles off of it. That's fine. Um, I mean, it's perfectly fine. But you can also use it to make things like... I just made chocolate cake last night. As you can see, we've been into it. Oh, so good. It's, re it's really difficult, though, when you make something that's really tasty, like that chocolate cake is to die for, but you don't want to take too much. Edibles can really, uh, you can become overly high. I know there's people out there that are probably saying, oh, you can't, be. but no. Like, I literally was so high on edibles that I was afraid to walk down the hallway because I kept thinking, what if I'm really on a precipice? But I'm so high that I think I'm in my hallway. And then I take a step and I fall off this cliff. I mean, that's how I, I've, I've, yeah, I've had many experiences with edibles that were like horrifying because it was just too high. And that's when you go to bed. Also, if you get too high, you can always take straight CBD oil and it helps kind of counteract the THC, so it evens you out so you're not so high. Just so you know, you don't have to go to the emergency room, you know, if you've taken too much pot. You don't have to do it. Just always make sure that you have a bottle of straight CBD oil, you know, without the THC, and that can help mitigate the, you know, the overly highness. Um, all of my edibles are made from organic, gluten-free ingredients. I make the cannabis butter with the trim and, you know, nice high-end organic butter. Please don't use margarine. No! Do not use margarine to make medicine. Absolutely not. Um, what the edibles do, what they give is... Uh, I can't find my other page here. Where? Oh, well, I can remember. Um, the edibles are really great for sleep, even if you get too high off of them. If you just, you know, go into the bedroom and close your eyes and go to sleep you will wake up the next morning and think, that was the best sleep I've had in a long time. You sleep hard on edibles, hard healing sleep, which is what everybody needs. It's good for pain, depression, motivation. That big chunk you saw taken out was uh, part of that's my partner. Um, he's been building a shop all by himself. He's been renovating uh, an old pole barn and turning it into a forging shop so that, you know, and he's actually going to sell, you know, hit the products that he makes out of it. And he's been, every morning he wakes up and takes an edible and then he goes out there and he works for like eight to 10 hours a day building this shop all by himself, doing the electric and everything. I mean, it's amazing. He's, he's amazing. But um, that's his motivation, you know, because we're both getting up there in age and you get aches and pains when you work hard. So um, and good dreams, and it's a nice way to unwind. During our second bout of COVID that we had a couple weeks back, we lived off edibles. They helped with aches and pains and with healing sleep. Cannabom, coconut oil, local bees, no, beeswax when I can get it, and cannabis trim. Again, leaves, stems, roots, bud. This stuff is great. I have, okay, I apologize. You're going to hear Evie barking because that's all she does all goddamn day. So a little Pomeranian. Uh, this stuff I, I use for uh, my hand, my lupus fingers. As you can see, they're starting to get that, uh, starting to get swollen and out of shape. Ugh. It's kind of a vanity thing for me. But that helps. Uh, it helps with that. It cured a severe sunburn that was blistering. 
um, I slathered my so my whole back was starting to blister. So Andy and I kept slathering the balm on. The next morning when I woke up, nothing. The sunburn was gone, no blisters, and my skin was just slightly darker, like it had, it had tanned overnight. It was crazy. Andy was like flabbergasted. It was like, wow, I cannot believe that the balm got rid of those blisters and kept them from bursting. It was crazy. Heals sores, wounds, acne, great for all of that. I use it as my whole skincare product regime. I don't use anything with retinol or anything like that. I can't. My skin will break out. My skin is like, nope, we're just using cannabis and that's it. So, um, topical pain relief for joints, muscles, pain associated with autoimmune disorders such as MS, Lyme, fibromyalgia, RA, and lupus. I actually have a woman that down in the cities that is using uh, the balm, just this, in place of the Oxycontin. She was actually able to come off of an Oxy, and she only uses this for her pain because it soaks in, you know, and it really works well. So, like I said, all of these things I talk about have been tested on yours truly. I am the guinea pig. Uh, because the healthcare system has disregarded me for decades. Number one, because I'm poor. Number two, because I'm a woman. And number three, because I ask questions. So I've really had to rely on my own medical. So I turned to Dr. Cannabis, and so far, I have not been disappointed. And, of course, there's the old, you know, you can smoke them if you got them as well. But, like I said, there's so many different, and, and every single type, the, the tinctures, the edibles, the balm, the smoke, it all affects different aspects of your health. So, yeah, if you have any questions, you can contact me in the comments below. I'll be glad to share my recipes with you. Um, and all of my knowledge, that's what this channel is basically about, is I just want to educate. I want to help people be a little bit healthier. If you're in, in, in you know, kind of in my shoes where maybe you don't have, you can't afford a doctor, you know, you don't have health insurance, um, you have health problems, but you don't want to rely on big pharma for everything. Like for me, it started out as I have lupus, but I didn't, I never wanted to do immune suppression therapy because I don't believe in it. I think it's a crock. I think it's horrible. I think it's a way for big pharma to get you in their clutches and never let you go. Because once you destroy the immune system, it's really hard to bring it back. So, um, so that's why I really started doing my research and, again, using myself as a guinea pig. So anyway, this has probably gone on too long. I hope everyone has a beautiful day. Good healing to you. And... Smoke them if you got them. Namaste.